The fundamental laws of nature state that sticking to your pack means you may live to see another day. While this may ring true in the jungle though, this theory most certainly does not hold water in the financial world. One of the most discussed topics on the market is the herd mentality of investors. To all the Gen Zers watching this video, I'm simply referring to what is known as FOMO or the fear of missing out. Throughout history, we as a people have witnessed innumerable incidents where herd investors get wiped out in the market because of a bubble, a fraud, or just macroeconomic circumstances. As long as humans follow their basal instincts and irrationality exists in our veins, boom and bust cycles will always be a part of our life. There is beauty in imperfection, which is why there is arbitrage in goods and the markets work the way they do. Sure, some folks may say that systemic risk will always persist, but as long as there is information asymmetry in the world, the common household investor will always be a few steps behind the giants calling the shots out there. But worry not, because I have good news for you. Even in times of uncertainty, one can always find the silver lining. Today, we're here to draw inspiration and learn from somebody who has absolutely no formal education in finance, but is still deemed to be one of the most sound investors of our generation. A man who is one of a handful of people who minted north of $800 million for his firm when markets across the world collapsed during the 2008 financial bubble. He is one of the central characters of Michael Lewis's Big Short, which went on to become a blockbuster movie charming viewers world over. That's right, we're of course talking about the legendary investor, Michael Bowie. Now, Bowie started his career as a doctor, but after that, he went on to create his hedge fund. He had already developed a reputation as an investor by demonstrating success in value investing, which he wrote about on message boards on the stock discussion site Silicon Investor beginning in 1996. His stock recommendations were so effective that he drew the attention of corporations like Vanguard and White Mountains Insurance Group, as well as notable investments like Joel Greenblatt. Bowie has a very traditional view of what is valuable. He has stated several times that his investment philosophy is based on Benjamin Graham and David Dodd's 1934 book, Security Analysis, A Modern Approach. As he modestly states, I base all of my stock selections entirely on fundamentals. Now, in Bowie's career so far, he has witnessed two major market crashes, the tech bubble in 2000 and the subprime mortgage crisis in 2008, two monumental events responsible for making Bowie the legend he is today. Now, according to Bowie, we are headed into yet another major downturn in the capital markets as the pandemic took its toll on the world and the Federal Reserve began loosening the US's monetary policy by slashing interest rates, buying government bonds through quantitative easing and just printing money. Burry was among the first few to call out how this would have serious repercussions for the economy. In 2021, he was extremely vocal about the bubble brewing in the United States of America, cautioning and educating his audience to take a rather defensive stance in their investing strategy. He even went so far as to tweet this. Now, Burry was spot on. Towards the end of 2021, the US's consumer price index was at a 40-year high. Of course, before the Federal Reserve could act upon it, the billionaires of the world were exiting their positions and booking profits. Some names include some of the top CEOs and founders, people like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Satalia Nadella, and Michael Burry himself. While the market indices soared, top dogs of the world were selling and the herd kept buying in. A lot of articles and columns back then dismissed what was happening. Some even called it a mimicking act, but guess what? The joke's on them. The likes of Bowie had found the perfect moment to dilute their holdings and secure the green. What commoners identified as a rising market, the financial elite identified as their exit point. Now, after observing Burry's patterns closely, one can safely describe him to be the textbook definition of a contrarian. Today, we're going to dissect the modus operandi of Scion Asset Management's Commander-in-Chief and try to understand what it takes to take on the ruthless financial markets and make the most out of a bubble. Now, if you're like me, you're worried about the state of the markets and you're looking for a way to diversify your portfolio with non-market correlated assets, then you need to hear about this video's sponsor, Masterworks.io. They buy incredible pieces of art ranging from $1 to $30 million by artists like Banksy and Picasso. They then securitize them with the SEC, allowing investors to buy shares on their site in an initial offering like an IPO. The sign-up process is really easy. You simply create an account using the link down below in the description, enter your details and indicate how much you're likely to be investing. 
The next step is to set up a phone call with one of Masterworks experts. This is a really cool opportunity to learn more about the different artists' markets, their cultural significance, and how they've appreciated. And you can also learn about the data-driven thesis as to why Masterworks select each of their respective pieces. Once you're set up, you can get started investing in individual paintings, building out a diversified portfolio across the asset class that is fine art. Investors already received a 32% annualized return in 2020 from their sale of Banksy's Mona Lisa. Masterworks is democratizing the art market and allowing the masses to invest in an asset class that was previously unavailable to us. So if that sounds interesting to you, if diversifying your investment portfolio is important to you, then make sure to check out masterworks.io. There's a link down below in the description for you to skip the waitlist and get started today. Now, what's fascinating about Burry is that his investment thesis can be broken down in layman's terms. His principles and methodology are in line with some of the most seasoned investors like Warren Buffett. It's a game of value investing and value derivation, a blend of current affairs, numbers and policy play from the lens of the equity investor. By and large, his thesis can be broken down into five major points which can easily be replicated by you and I. The first is mimicking other investors is suicide. As enticing as it may seem, coattail investing or mimicking has its share of pitfalls. One of the first rules of investing is understanding what you're signing up for. It is imperative to understand that your financial goals are not identical to other investors. A stock guru has a different investment horizon and financial goals than you do. You may need to liquidate the investment soon while the stock expert can stay invested for the long term. It happens every so often that a stock market expert commits an error or lapses in their judgment. It has disastrous consequences for you and other coattail investors. The expert bears the losses, but the losses wipe out your portfolio. The domino effect is something you really want to be wary of. Now, seasoned investors have a diversified portfolio of stocks, which is backed by high level calculations and in-depth analysis. You may not have many stocks and copying the trading moves is a threat to your portfolio. You have a prominent position in the copycat portfolio and the portfolio itself bears the brunt of the decline if the stock does not perform well. When the guru understands it's time to sell, it's time to sell. Most investors who jump onto the bandwagon mistake a trade for an investment decision and unfortunately, as long as you retain that stock, it continues to erode value from your holdings. Great investors are well informed about the businesses in which they invest. The specialist knows everything there is to know about the company and has been investing for a long time. Half knowledge is perhaps one of the most detrimental traits of investing and it's insane how many people still don't learn despite severe losses. In our hyper-connected world, people are bombarded with this information on the internet. A lot of times people get tipped off about a significant investment opportunity from social media, but it's almost always too late to act on that news as the source of that tip has invested a considerable amount and it's now priced in. The stock price has already shot up and you're late to the party. The next point is intrinsic value versus market value. Now understanding the concept of intrinsic value is the foundation of value investing. Value is primarily judged by the company's financials and other fundamentals, mainly cash flows. In general, a value investor tries to analyze all public accessible information about a firm in order to determine if it is undervalued by the market as a whole. Official documents found on the SEC website, like quarterly and annual reports, fall into this category. More importantly though, they rely on the idea that the market overreacts to stock price fluctuations. Once the numbers are spread, models are created using discounted cash flows, the required rate of return and growth rates to arrive at the stock's intrinsic value. If the current trading price of the stock is below that intrinsic value, it's considered to be undervalued and vice versa. With those methods in mind, an investor can examine major market occurrences and determine the points at which the stock's liquidation value is most discounted from its intrinsic value. This suggests that there is a margin of safety for buying undervalued equities at particular points in the market. Now the next point is to be the tiger among the deer. If there is one trait that is standard across all of Burry's actions, it's that he stands tall with conviction over all the decisions he makes in the market. Being a contrarian is painfully lonely, but rewarding in equal measure. It takes impeccable understanding, grit, and determination to take bets against the market. Burry began focusing on the subprime market in 2005. He correctly anticipated that the real estate bubble would burst in 2007 based on his examination of mortgage lending patterns in 2003 and 4. His research into residential real estate values convinced him that subprime mortgages, particularly those with teaser rates and the bonds backed by these mortgages, would begin to lose value 
value as soon as the original rates were replaced by much higher rates which could happen as soon as two years after initiation. As a result of this determination, he decided to short the market by convincing giants like Goldman Sachs and other financial firms to sell him credit default swaps against subprime loans that he believed were vulnerable. Burry faced an investor revolt during his payments for the credit default swaps, with some investors in his fund claiming his projections were flawed and demanding their money back. Burry's analysis eventually came to light though. He made a personal profit of over $100 million and a profit of more than $800 million for his surviving investors. Between November 2000 and June 2008, Siren Capital earned a total return of 489%. Over the same time period, the S&P 500, usually regarded as the benchmark for the US market, returned little under 3%, including dividends. Now, number four is that momentum is temporary while numbers are gospel. Over the past few years, the popularity of passive investment strategies has skyrocketed. Investors come swarming like bees to invest directly into the index because it's going up or into other asset classes like mutual funds. This behavior is also a fundamental factor for the markets to keep rising without any real reason, and Burry warned us about this. Burry's investment thesis is heavily reliant on macroeconomic factors. It is a pure top-to-bottom approach, where the evaluation of economic trends is done thoroughly before any decisions are made on individual stocks. He certainly wasn't kidding when he spoke about fears of inflation early last year. In fact, Burry put his money where his mouth is when it came to his analysis. Scion Asset Management over the years has held strategic long-term positions, but towards the end of 2021, the company specifically took a very short-term position in the market, usually for about a quarter before completely pulling out with the littlest profits. We can see the evidence for this right here if we compare Michael's Q3 portfolio with that of Q2. When it happened, it seemed counterintuitive for a fund with the reputation of being so reckless with its money, but things are different when you're data rich and strong on logic. It's all a part of the plan. With mounting inflation and the awful situation with the housing market in the US, Burry was sure about calling it quits in the market and exiting. Early this year, the S&P 500 started witnessing a sharp correction the moment the Fed announced that successive interest rate hikes were coming. Asset classes from equities, commodities and crypto continue to witness a brutal correction. Unfortunately, the situation in Ukraine has added to investor tensions as some believe this could be the beginning of World War III. Kiev, the capital city, has been under siege by Russian forces for two weeks now. Ukrainian citizens are being killed as they flee the country. The biggest nuclear power plant in Europe has been attacked by the Russians in an attempt to completely paralyze the government and the country. This began just as the wounds of the pandemic started to heal. It's completely unreal. The last two years have been a complete letdown of expectations and it certainly reflects in the markets. An asset class that Burry is extremely bearish on in the coming period of time is cryptocurrency. In an exclusive email to CNBC last year, he went on to write that he is not betting against cryptos, but he believes they are currently in a speculative bubble. It's breathtaking. This religion of real and fake people. He recently tweeted about the army of promoters and bots working to pump up crypto and meme stock prices. The speculation probably tops anything in history. He believes that because of surface level interest rates, the crypto market is highly leveraged, unstable, and ready to pop. Burry's recent comments show he sees crypto's promise, but he's skeptical of the space's massive hype and exorbitant prices. The Scion CEO has previously slammed Shiba Inu coin as pointless, mocked the price of Dogecoin, and warned that Bitcoin is a speculative bubble as well, built on massive amounts of leverage and prone to government crackdowns. And that leads us on to number five, the quest for value that never ends. The last piece of advice to take from Michael Burry is to never ever give up on the big picture. Be on the prowl for value. At the end of the big short, Burry mentions that the next big fish to be caught will be in water, gold, and farmland. He says fresh, clean water cannot be taken for granted, and it is not. Water is political and litigious. His commitment in 2013 was only to focus on these three commodities, but that did not last very long as we saw Burry actively taking positions in the equity market shortly after that. When the US was suffering from an overvalued market, Burry advised people to look overseas for investing opportunities. He says that is a lot easier in countries like Japan and India where the stock price of companies is backed by legitimate cash flows and it's trading well below their intrinsic values. An easy way to study if a market is overvalued is to have a look at the Schiller price to earnings ratio or the market's PE. High PE ratios indicate that investors have higher expectations of future earnings growth and performance because of which they are willing to pay more for these stocks. As we see it today, investors are roughly speaking willing to pay $30 for a company that earns $1 in profit. 
Now, the P.E. ratio of the S&P had been rising since 2014, and the average price has risen dramatically with it. The US market is severely overvalued, and correction seems to be the only logical next occurrence. In my opinion, right now, we are already in that correction. Now, with that being said, we ought to use examples of Michael Burry's to reflect upon how we can evolve as investors instead of just mimicking him. One of these quotes directed towards folks working in finance also rings true to independent investors. He says, I have always believed that a single talented analyst working very hard can cover an amazing amount of the investment landscape and this belief remains unchallenged in my mind. In brutal honesty, the stock market doesn't care where you come from, where you've worked or where you're going or the pedigree that you hold. In my opinion, it is the closest simulation of democracy. Merit survives and only merit wins. Nobody knew Burry until he blew up during the housing crisis. Pretty much the same is true for other investing legends like Ray Dalio, Peter Lynch and Warren Buffett. They've all taken decades to understand and perfect their game. In our eyes, it's easy to view these folks as winners, but in reality, no two people have the same modus operandi. Each one has their own unique method, and if you're an active investor, you need to discover and hone yours too. I hope that these types of videos where we dig deep into some of the best investing minds in the world help you to build a mental model on how to test the waters when it comes to investing. So make sure to drop the names of any other investors you'd like me to make a video about in the comments section down below. And of course, before leaving, I'd like to share one of Burry's quotes with you all. If you are going to be a great investor, you have to fit the style to who you are. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and comment and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like insight into my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. There's a link in the description to masterworks.io, a site that allows you to buy fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy, which can be a great way to diversify your portfolio with non-market correlated assets. It's completely free to sign up, so if that sounds interesting, then make sure to check it out. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get 9% interest on stable coins like USDC, which is a far higher rate than you get from any savings account these days. Just make sure not to use Tether. Thank you all for the support. Thanks for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.